the desert southwest, a place where water can never be taken for granted, and where Albuquerque, the biggest city in New Mexico, was in trouble. One of the things that's common to all these big western cities that we've built here in the desert, the places like Phoenix and Albuquerque, is that many of the people who live here came from other places and we often came from wetter places. And so we wanted to bring kind of the landscape and the climate of these places we came from with us. And so we would build houses and surround them with lawns and we would pump groundwater with reckless abandon. And there was this transition in our understanding you know, back in the late 80s and, and early 90s, that that really was no longer a sustainable path, that the aquifer wasn't as unlimited as we thought. It was really a crisis, a crisis situation where the aquifer's dropping three to five feet a year. We're using 250 gallons per capita per day, and people are looking at us, and we're looking at ourselves going, what do we do, what's the next steps? The answer can be seen today in the xeriscapes that have replaced once thirsty lawns in a 50% reduction in per capita water consumption, in a decline in overall water use in spite of population growth, and in an aquifer that's rebounded 20 feet in under a decade. It's a southwestern success story, and it didn't happen by accident. To reach its water goals, Albuquerque developed and followed a plan a plan that's evolved into a comprehensive 100-year water strategy called Water 2120. Water 2120 is an innovative program that really takes an integrated look at water supply and demand for Albuquerque over a very long time period, uh, 100 years. That sets the framework for telling us what we need to do today to be prepared for tomorrow. At the heart of the 2120 plan, a continued emphasis on conservation and public education. If you look at Albuquerque's conservation performance, we go back to the mid-1990s when we started doing all this, and our per capita water use in this community has been cut essentially in half in those two decades, and that's a remarkable conservation performance. Nobody is conserving as effectively as Albuquerque. We're probably the best success story in conservation in the West. One of the key things that makes Water 2120 work is the fact that we are continuing to conserve water. How low can we go with conservation? And I know that the, the Water Conservation Officer for the Water Authority spent a lot of time thinking about that topic and trying to determine, well, really what's, what's the floor for conservation and still maintain our quality of life? The plan also ramps up the community's reliance on reuse and recycling. A key part of Water 2120 is expanding our use of reclaimed water. And the importance of that is that we want to make the best use of the water we already own before we go out and look for other expensive sources. And so we have nine different alternatives we're looking at for reusing water. Uh, six of them are non-potable projects and three of them are indirect potable projects. So really it's conservation, reuse and storage are really the, the, the three legs of the stool. Water 2120 emphasizes optimal management of surface water resources, including development of increased storage capacity, creation of infrastructure for stormwater capture, and storage in the aquifer itself. This is the Bear Canyon Aquifer Storage and Recovery Project. It's the first project of its type to be permitted and operated in the state of New Mexico. What we're doing is taking non-potable surface water out of the Rio Grande, piping it up here and releasing it into the arroyo. That mimics the natural process that happens when stormwater flows into the arroyo and infiltrates into the aquifer. The benefit of that underground storage is that it's not subject to evaporation. I was particularly interested to learn about aquifer storage and recovery. I think it is really a fantastic strategy that to me captures the best of today's thinking about how to manage over the long term. Groundwater, of course, will continue to play an important role. In previous water resources management strategies, we were transitioning from heavy emphasis on groundwater and essentially over-utilizing groundwater to a more sustainable production of groundwater. In this most recent Water 2120 strategy, 
we are taking uh, steps that, that move us well beyond that. So going from overutilization to actually preservation. So we're actually preserving the aquifer for generations to come. Water 2120, an integrative management plan developed over the course of five years. Nothing was off the table. We looked at a, a whole range of, uh, of different potential supplies and ultimately came up with a ranking of about 30 or 35 different alternatives. The ones that um, essentially floated to the top, if you will, uh, were the ones that are relatively easy to do uh, from a permitting perspective, from an engineering perspective, uh, from a technology perspective. So they're all supply alternatives that, that we can do today under our current permits using existing technology, using existing infrastructure that the Water Authority already has. Another way that a lot of utilities look at these types of things is an integrated resource plan. So it's really a way to look at how all of your resources interact. And as you add different components to your portfolio, they all interact with each other. They're all integrated in a way that impacts how both supply and demand behave. And those are very important in terms of thinking about the future. Not predicting what would happen necessarily, but really looking at what are the possibilities and how do we be prepared for any of those possibilities. The public and other stakeholders were involved from the outset. Under this Water 2120, we had four different public meetings. We had a town hall. We met with our technical customer advisory committee uh, every month for 16 months. Um, there was a very extensive public involvement process where we started with our customers, we said, hey, what do you guys think about this 100-year plan? What would be important to you? Okay, so who is for using number eight next? Wow, oh, we got the The public forums were not just about hearing a scientific presentation and giving people three minutes at a microphone to shoot back comments, but rather they were dialogues facilitated at tables, round tables, of really different perspectives. And I've not seen that in New Mexico in the water world before. Out of this process emerged a plan that reflects the community's sensitivity to environmental concerns and the needs of agriculture. This plan lays out a future for Albuquerque's water supply in which we no longer have the need to buy up and retire agricultural water rights to meet municipal needs. This is such an important thing because one of the you know, continuing sources of conflict in water in the western United States is between agricultural water rights, which has the senior water rights and have been here the longest, and growing cities, which sometimes need to buy and dry farmland. And so the fact that Albuquerque has a plan at this point that doesn't require retiring more farmland gives us a lot more flexibility in working collaboratively with our neighbors in the agricultural water using community. From the point of view of the Nature Conservancy, the most important aspect of the 2120 plan is the consideration of watershed management. So really integrating into the plan the idea that where the water comes from matters and that part of our long-term water security depends on making sure that those headwater forests are providing water to the San Juan Chama project and to Albuquerque over the long run. Incorporating the best climate science available, Water 2120 provides a roadmap that can be used and modified by water managers for decades to come. It creates a resilient framework for future managers. I mean, we're not going to be around probably running the system in 10 or 20 years when these tools might be needed. So this provides a framework so the people we're handing off this bequest package to um, can um, have a good set of tools and they can evolve them and modify them over time. And we're going to keep revisiting this planning process over and over again. Planning is an ongoing thing. It's not a thing that you do once and it's done. It's not a static thing. It's not a static plan. It's a process. And so five years from now, we can run through the process again, see what kind of answer we get 10 years from now, 20 years from now. We can continue to, to use this process and, and, uh, and, and uh, the plan will evolve, you know, as, as the Water Authority will evolve. It's all in the name of sustainability and resiliency.
It's certainly one of the most ambitious efforts that you'll find in any major metropolitan area in the West to really do long-range planning. There's really no one else that I'm aware of that's sort of tried to think out a, a full century. Already Albuquerque is being recognized for this forward-looking vision and the incorporation of the 100-year time frame. People in the future, our successors, need a roadmap. You know, and they need, they need to understand that this is the direction that we, we need to be headed in. I've come to, um, to really embrace this notion that we can adapt, that humans are sort of fundamentally adaptable, and the things that we've seen happen here in Albuquerque is that adaptation in action, and we've seen that happen. Um, and it gives me hope because there's a lot of hard adaptation yet to come. There will be more people here, water will remain scarce here. There's a lot of difficult times ahead, but sort of that human adaptive capacity leaves me sort of fundamentally optimistic.